This video has 12 Stardew Valley tips that are forbidden. Make sure you do not share these with your friends. Enjoy. I know that you know that giant crops exist. Look at these suckers. They will guarantee that you get more crops when you destroy them and I will guarantee that you can easily get many more of them. Plant pumpkins, melons or cauliflower in a 3x3 square to get a giant crop. Naturally you should plant more than just that as within these sprinklers here they are technically many 3x3 squares increasing the chances. You can greatly increase the likelihood of getting a giant crop by using pressure nozzles on your sprinklers. This will greatly increase the chances but wait we can do so much more screw the sprinklers they are actually just holding us back instead manually water all of your crops this will dramatically increase the likelihood and you are almost guaranteed to get one every single day remember to keep watering them once they have fully matured to continue getting these sweet big suckers if you are in the end game then naturally just use deluxe retaining soil and you won't even need to waste time watering them enjoy your acres of giant crops Watering crops can be really tedious but it is necessary to get rich or is it? What have I said there are a couple crops in the game that do not need to be watered at all. Yes I am referring to both rice and the taro root. If you plant these near a water source they will just magically water themselves. They will also grow faster if you do this so just do it. These might not be the most profitable crops in this game but it is basically zero effort. Additionally there is the fiber seed. You can get the recipe to craft these from Linus and for some reason these just don't need to be watered at all they just grow automatically but wait there is one more green tea trees these only need to be planted and then completely forgotten about no watering no babysitting needed unfortunately they can only be harvested in the last week of each season but it is free money so why not Tired of making money the traditional boring way? Tired of growing star fruit or ancient fruit turning them into wine and then aging them? Yeah after hundreds of hours this too can become tedious. This is why I only use this method to make money now. First ensure that you have the minor profession and the blacksmith profession. These are crucial. Make absolutely sure that it is the best luck day. Grab yourself two lucky rings and head into the dangerous version of the regular mines. Enter floor 1 using the ladder. Collect some free easy radioactive ore. Leave and repeat. This is by far the most effective way to get radioactive ore. Unfortunately radioactive nodes cannot spawn on any elevator floor so this is the most reliable farming method we have. Then turn all of that ore into bars. The truth is that they aren't really any good uses for the stuff so yeah just sell it. Each bar will make you 4500 gold. I can farm about 50 bars in a single day making a ridiculous 220,000 gold every single day. Multiply that over a month and you won't even know what to do with the money. Okay so if you would rather use a more traditional way of making money but with an exploitative twist keep watching. Make artisan goods as many as you can an entire stack of wine if you can. Make absolute sure that you have the artisan profession then run to Pierre and sell your artisan goods to him. Sounds normal right? Wrong. Now run to the statue of uncertainty and change your farming profession to anything other than the artisan profession. Now that your profession has changed head back to Pierre and buy back the artisan goods for less than you sold them. Yes, this is a real thing. Then go and change your profession back to the artisan profession and then sell them back to him. Keep doing this until there is nothing left and you are just absolutely loaded with money. Thank you Blade for finding this. Yeah yeah that's all good but how do we get an infinite supply of artisan goods to abuse this? It's simple. No really it is simple. Just craft up like 300 bee houses, get some fairy rose flowers and just drop them all on your ginger island farm. No I do not mean the farmable area over here. That is a terrible idea. I mean over here this area allows you to grow a very small amount of crops. Abuse these spots by growing fairy roses and then completely covering every available spot with a bee house. Since this is ginger island these flowers will be here forever allowing you to harvest fairy rose honey every four days forever that is about 350 fairy rose honey every four days that is about 330,000 gold every four days and that is before we abuse the pierre method from the last tip Cinder shards, battery packs and dragon teeth, what do these have in common? They are somewhat hard to come by, or are they? No, super easy, barely an inconvenience. Just catch like 10 stingray and drop them all off into a fish pond like this. These magical fish ponds can produce all of these highly valuable items and you know what? The chances are not bad at all. This is not nearly as unrealistic as hoping for a prismatic shard or a treasure chest from the other fish ponds. This just makes sense. 
fishing isn't hard. Once you have reached about 1000 hours, there is no way you can ever lose at this simple little fishing mini game. I lie, you can get good at fishing much quicker than that, unless you can't. That's right, some of you might just suck at it forever. Get buffed up seafoam pudding, it's relatively easy to cook these. Enchant your fishing rod with the master enchant and slowly level up your fishing until you are level 10. Then grab the cork fishing tackle with all of these buffs, your fishing bar will just be absolutely massive. Look at this. Compare this to a normal level 10 fishing bar, this is unreal. Even if you suck, you'll catch anything that dares bite on your line. Enjoy. This next one is only available to those of you who play on PC, sorry. There is a weapon in the game that is so unbelievably broken and overpowered that Mr. Concerned Ape himself had to remove it from the game. Yes, I am talking about the legendary Galaxy Slingshot. The only way you can get this is by using the cheat menu that lets you get any item in the game instantly. Yeah, cheating is bad, however this is just unfair. Load it with Iridium Ore and you will be decimating any enemy in your path. This is the only ranged weapon in the game that actually works well enough to validate it for now. The next one is boring but it's still nice I guess so here it is. Look at how many rings I have collected in this playthrough. Look at all the boots I decided to keep and not sell. Taking up valuable chest space. Well no more. The dresser. Yeah this thing looks like it is only for decoration. This thing has a use and it's great. It can hold all of your clothing, shirts, pants, boots and even rings. Unlimited space all in one little storage box. That you can pick up and move even if it is full. Much better than using chests. This video is sponsored by the little join button below, click it. If you are broke, click subscribe instead. Do you like the sun? Of course you do, the night is all dark and vision impaired, lame. Just become the sun, run to that forge with two iridium bands and two glowstone rings, combine them and wear them, all of these buffs will stack, thereby effectively allowing you to hold four glowstone rings, you are now the sun, look at how bright you are, additionally the magnetism effect also stacks making the slingshot ever so slightly less annoying. This might not be nearly as good as lucky rings, still cool that we can do this though. This is unbelievably simple but oh so important, so listen up closely. Build a gosh darn Junimo hut, get some sprinklers and place them in the most optimal way possible like this. Do not forget about the scarecrow. Now get ancient fruit seeds, I know it's a lot of effort but get them and plant all of them around the Junimo hut on the very first day of spring. If you have hyper speed grow use it otherwise use regular speed grow. And then do nothing, these suckers will continue to grow for 3 entire seasons, spring, summer and fall. The Junimos will collect them for you and all you need to do is play the game. You will have to harvest these on rainy days but that really isn't too bad. This is the most effective money in the game. You can turn these into artisan goods and abuse the previous tip or just sell them out of complete laziness like myself. Either way, enjoy your new golden clock. Someone asked for the most optimal layout for hops and kegs within a single shed. Don't worry, I got you. The rule is simple. For each hop crop, have two kegs. So just get yourself 45 garden pots and grow hops in them in a shed like this. Make sure to use deluxe retaining soil so you never have to bother watering these. These will continue to produce hops every single day forever since they are in a building. Then grab 90 kegs and drop all of them in the shed until the final layout looks like this. Now every single day you can harvest all of the hops and drop them into half of your kegs. This is very tedious as you will need to do this every single day. However, this does generate 19,000 gold per day and half a million is season so it might just be worth it. That was 12 forbidden Stardew Valley tips but this next video has 15 things that everyone keeps forgetting about in Stardew Valley. These are crucial so go watch it immediately. Thanks for watching but for now, I will see you in the next video.